Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm judging you. I like to judge. I'm a judger. I hate when people say, hey, don't judge, because I think you don't take away my hobbies. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> I've been flying so much, and I used to uh, be okay with it, and then something went wrong. I almost died on an airplane. What, let me rephrase that. In my mind, <laughs> I almost died on an airplane. I used to be, like, when I was younger, I was terrified of flying, all right? I, I was the kind of person that I had to get drunk, I had to take drugs, I had to stay up all night just to get on a plane and survive the flight without freaking out. I was the type of frightened flyer that, you know, once the plane got up, I would ring the flight attendant button, and, and she would come over, and I would whisper to her, the, the noise changed. <laughs> Can you hear, like, it was like, <laughs> and now it's like, <laughs> I just, I just wanted to tell somebody. I thought someone should know. And like, I was the guy that then they'd go have like a flight attendant huddle and they'd all look over at me like, and I'd be like. <laughs> but then I started flying so much, I could not afford the, the energy taken from me from being afraid. I could no longer fly the plane in coach in my mind. I could not do it. It was draining. So I stuffed that fear and that's a spiritual decision. I have no control over this. The guy who's flying should be able to fly this without my help. All right. Then Cleveland happened. Now, this, this, this is a serious story. All right, this is a recent story and I'm still grappling with this. I fly a lot, all right? And I was taking a afternoon flight out of LAX to Cleveland, a four o'clock flight. I'm a professional flyer. I know that I should check the weather where I'm going because if there's a storm in Denmark, I'm gonna be screwed out of LAX. I don't know why, if there's, a, if there's weather anywhere on the planet, we're all going to pay for it in the air. So there's gonna be a storm outside of Cleveland. I see that on the weather uh, thing. So I'm driving to the airport thinking, we're gonna be delayed, I'm screwed, the day is screwed, I'm, I'm, it's over. I get to the airport, I get to the gate, four o'clock, we're on the plane, 4.10, we're up in the air, and I'm like, great, we got out. 4.20, the pilot gets on the intercom and he says, how's everybody doing? Uh... <laughs> Just wanted to say that uh, we might hit some weather outside of Cleveland, but I think I'm gonna miss it. Why is he talking like that? What's with the attitude? I'm like, who is this guy? What are we supposed to sit here and go, I wonder when it's gonna happen? Why is he telling us that? And what's with his attitude? Why is he so cocky? Is he a hot dogger? Is he gambling with us? You know. <laughs> this is what going through my, that's what's going through my mind, but I don't make a big deal out of it, all right? I'm a professional flyer, I'm cool. I'm watching VH1 on DirecTV. The Woodstock movie is on. We're an hour and a half outside of Cleveland, an hour and a half, and this guy gets on and says, yeah, uh, looks like we're gonna hit that weather. Uh, and I think that you thought we were gonna miss. And he says, uh, could the flight attendants please take their seats and you know, prepare the cabin for landing and please take your seats. So I'm thinking like, all right, well, it's gonna be bad. We're gonna hit the weather, but I'm cool. I'm not gonna freak out, but they're gonna sit down. So that's, you know, it's gonna be bad. So I'm watching the Woodstock movie. Joe Cocker is singing with a little help from my friends. <laughs> right at the high note where, where he's like, I get high. I see lightning on both sides of the plane. <laughs> and the aircraft falls out of the sky. Falls, just a free fall. All right, I don't freak out, but the guy behind me, all right, I'm now I hear in my headphones, Joe Cocker, and the guy in the seat behind me going, oh God, oh God, oh God, no, no. He's freaking out. I don't freak out, I have some weird thoughts. Uh, my first thought is, do I want to die to this song? Um, <laughs> you know, this is a good song, but do I want to die to it? And then my next thought is, I should make a death playlist for my iPod. <laughs> you know, for when I have time to decide. I'm getting older, I could be on a treadmill. What's that pain shooting down my arm? Uh-oh, pick a tune. <laughs> Should have made a playlist. 
And then my third thought was, which I thought was odd, I wish my girlfriend were here. <laughs> to die with me. <laughs> That's sad. Like, I want her to be here when we plummet to our death in this horrible crash together. But that's actually a functional metaphor for all of my adult relationships, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Planes crash and get on board. <laughs> so, all right, at this point in the story, I just want to say, look, folks, you don't choose your scream. <laughs> you don't know what's going to come out of you. You, can, you only hope for the best. You may have an idea. I mean, I've had weird moments with spider webs I didn't see, you know, like, oh, oh, I didn't, did that just come out of me? You know? <laughs> now, okay, now granted, the, the bar had been set pretty low by the pussy behind me. <laughs> but I'm proud to report that when the plane fell out of the air again, what came out of me when I was terrified to my core was, oh, come on! <laughs> I, I didn't gloat. I didn't turn around and go, that's how a man screams. <laughs> so why don't you put a lid on that little girl inside of you, get it together and man up. Come on, buddy. Get hold of yourself. And then when the plane lurched to the left, I let out one of these. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm a little ashamed to report that I did let out one, uh, Jesus, not like this. <laughs> and he's not even my guy. You know, he was never my guy. <laughs> my people come from the father, the original, the only true God, but live the lie you want. <laughs> but you know, Jesus is so catchy. What, do you, what am I gonna say? Yahweh, no. <laughs> Then you, you got to explain yourself. I don't know. It's an Old Testament thing. I, I don't even know what language it is. I, yeah, it's stupid. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so look. Here we, we, we get out from under the storm, okay? And, you know, I can feel the pilot flying. Now, you, you have to understand that I've created a character for this pilot. That in my mind, what happened was the tower said to him, you can't land in Cleveland. You have to divert to another airport. My pilot said, I'm not doing that. I got this. <laughs> and then shut his radio off. <laughs> that was my pilot. <laughs> so he gets out from under the storm and he just starts circling Cleveland. You could feel him flying. You know, I could feel it. And I look over at the woman over there and I said, he's taking a victory lap. <laughs> we almost died up there. Am I right? Did we almost die or what? And she rightfully said, I don't know. <laughs> I'm intense, you know, it happens. And then I made the mistake of asking this question. I said, so uh, I had my earphones on. Was everybody screaming? <laughs> and she said, no, just you two guys. <laughs> So now I gotta bond with this guy. Like, it, hey, we did the right thing, man. You know, it was, a, it was a human response. These people are emotionally numb. They're, they're dead inside. Our culture does that to them. We're alive, we're present. So the pilot lands the plane, and I don't know about you, but if I'm in a situation where I almost die, I want it to be acknowledged. I want it to be addressed. I don't really know what I expected him to say. Was he going to get on the intercom and go, oh, man, is everybody OK? <laughs> oh, my god, that was awful. The, the co-pilot's still crying. And <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to fly again. I'm just not cut out for it anymore. <laughs> oh, god, I love my family. I didn't get that. What I got was, welcome to Cleveland. <laughs> the local time is 12.06. So then I'm like, no, screw that. You put us all through something up there. You gambled with our lives, and I'm gonna give you a piece of my mind. 
And I get up and I'm like in the back of the plane and I'm like, I can just feel my thoughts converging, you know, into a fist that's gonna come right out of my face and you know, make an impact. I didn't know what it was gonna be, but I knew I was gonna say something. I see the cabin doors open, I see epaulettes busy, you know, packing those over, oversized briefcases with important things. And, and I'm moving down and I don't know what happened to my nerve, but by the time I got to the, the, the sort of the cockpit door, this is what happened. I lean in and this is what came out of my face. Do you guys have fun up there? <laughs> what am I, reprimanding children? <laughs> With your mid-air shenanigans? <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> it scared me in here. <laughs> so now I feel emasculated. I feel that I overreacted, that I panicked. I was mad at him. I leave the, the airplane. I go get my bag. I go out to the curb to wait for a cab. It's starting to rain. I'm standing there. I see the, the, the other screaming guy over there. And we have that weird bonding moment of people that live through something, you know? Like, there was that moment where was like, yeah, nom, right? <laughs> Peace, brother, never forget. See you at the wall next year. <laughs> then I go to my hotel in the cab. I get there. It's about uh, 12.30 and the storm that we flew through hits Cleveland, it's bad. Sideways rain, lightning, thunder, wind, it was horrible. And then I realized I'm sitting in my hotel room and I'm like, God, I, I must have almost died. I really did almost die. And I start to get shaky and I start freaking out and I start having those thoughts that you, suppose, you, know, you have when you almost die. I'm like, I'm sitting there in my room going, oh God, I gotta treat people nicer. You know, I gotta, I gotta be grateful. I gotta, you know, experience joy. I've, my life is pretty good, I have a good girlfriend. I live in the freest country in the world if you can afford it. And <laughs> everything's really okay, you know, and I'm all shook up. I didn't know what to do with the energy, so I just masturbated. <laughs> Ninety-nine percent of the time, a guy masturbating alone in a hotel room is a sad thing. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> this was a celebration <laughs> of life. I didn't even look at porn. I didn't even think about sex. I just masturbated to being alive. <laughs> I'm alive! Okay, now what I'm about to share is probably too much information, but that's just kind of the, the kind of person I am. Now, I don't want you to judge me for it, but I, I finished on the floor. <laughs> of my hotel room. I was shocked too. There was a moment where I'm like, what did I do? What did I, you know? I don't know why I did it. But I, I called my girlfriend after that, you know, and I, and I, I told her about the, the flight and she got upset because of the way I describe it. And she was like, you know, almost crying. She's like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I just, I just, I just jerked off. And, <laughs> and she said, well, that's good, right? <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. I, uh, I just, I, I finished on the floor. She goes, why'd you do that? <laughs> and thinking fast, I said, cause that's what freedom feels like sometimes. <laughs> and then I started humming the national anthem. Good night.